Okay, so writing XSLT is just like writing code. And I cannot imagine my code without unit testing. So because of that, we understand that uh, it's very important to also write unit testing for, for XSLTs. Um, to help you with that, let's see what we've done. So the, the agenda, first of all, we'll try to remember and see uh, what support we have for, for writing XSLT unit testing. And after that, we'll take a look at uh, an improvement proposal. So what we had three or four years ago, uh, and we presented actually right here at XML Prague, is to help those of you that write XSLTs, we've integrated the XPEC framework, uh, which is a behavior-driven development framework for writing um, test scenarios for XSLTs. And we've, um, so you'll be able to s simply start uh, writing XPEC scenarios in Oxygen. We've added an XPEC wizard. Uh, I don't know if you know about it, but if you right click on XSLT, you have the, the possibility to create an XSLT unit testing. And in its uh, customization, sorry. I, I did a boo. So you can, uh, in this customization page, you'll see the templates, the functions, and Oxygen will create a, a stub, a starting point uh, for uh, a scenario for each of, of those. Um, we also added built-in transformation scenarios for you to execute these um, uh, XPEC files. So if you click on apply transformation scenario on XPEC file, um, the transformation will be uh, executed and you'll get this kind of report in the browser. Um, what you asked for back then was for tighter integration. Those of you that have worked with uh, other programming languages like Java know that when you write JUnit tests, you have a dedicated view that presents all the tests and you can uh, run each one of them individually and so on. So what you asked for was entitled. So what I'm proposing right now is something very similar. So, um, what I did is I created a, a plugin for Oxygen, and this plugin contributes an action on the toolbar. And when you click it, it's going to run a transformation. It was there in the background. And afterwards, you'll see the results in a, in a dedicated view. If you click Show, it's going to select the, the scenario that uh, the corresponding scenario. Um, you can expand and see why it failed. Um, a little diff here. And you can even choose to just run a particular scenario like this. So again, the transformation runs in the background. And now you see the first scenario was skipped. And just uh, the, the second one was, uh, was run. Um, No, it finished. Why? Well, yes, you have to f uh, save changes because it will prompt you to save changes because in the background it will run the same ant transformation that XPAC runs. It could be made to work without saving. So if you're interested in contributing, let's talk about it. <laughs> um, what's interesting is that this helper view uh, is customizable uh, through XSLT, through HTML, and through JavaScript. So the way I did it is, again, I used the JavaFX web browser. And the content that is fed to this web browser 
um, the output is generated, the, the HTML fed to this web browser is generated by this XSLT. So if you want to change um, how it looks like, you just change the XSLT. And um, to interact between the view and Oxygen document, you do that from JavaScript. Again, by using that um, JavaScript to Java bridge that I've, I've talked about. So here, for example, it's the JavaScript function that sh selects a test in, in, uh, in, the, in the expect document. And as you can see, it delegates to, to this Java bridge. So it delegates to our uh, Java API. And um, this plugin, the, the idea is that expect, expect needs you. So if you want to contribute, uh, this plugin is open source on GitHub. And uh, the idea is that we can just build this core. And after that, uh, it's just uh, XSLT, HTML, and JavaScript to customize everything. And as to give you a, a, just a hint of what it could be done, um, for example, imagine that here in this view, if you double click on a test, perhaps Oxygen uh, diff tool um, could be presented. So that, that's something possible if, uh, if, if you find it interesting. Um, like George said, the expect project is alive. A new version was just released, oh, uh, 0.5. And um, it's available also on GitHub. And they are more, more than welcome to receive your feedback and your suggestions for, for improvement. So it was a short presentation just to raise your interest. Now, if you have any questions, any ideas on how we could build on top of that uh, plugin that I've just presented, Yes, Nigel. Yes, we, we could maybe just translate. You put a breakpoint in the expect file, and we could translate that in the compiled XSLT that is underneath, and uh, stop the transformation there. But then you need to understand you know, what expect does behind the scenes. True. Um, you, you have the expect pane when you're writing your expect tests. Is it also possible to see that pane when you're writing your XSLT? So you can write expect driven XSLT? I, I see no reason why you couldn't. <coughs> and how does it know which expect file is associated with the X? Well, so it's. <coughs> the, the link is. I know, I know. Yeah. Um, it's something that we'll have to think about it. So. Um, maybe, maybe a processing instruction, yes. Maybe oxygen association, somehow. <coughs> when you run the XSLT, 
Thank you, Alex. Thank you, George.